Hi, we're not on the range today. We're at one of our training facilities. And once again, we're talking about shotguns. We've talked about shotguns on many previous occasions. So there's going to be a few things today that in the interest of brevity, we leave out or mention very briefly. The specific topic I want to address today is to what degree, if any, does shotgun barrel length affect your velocity? Now the basic concept of how this works is when you have a round in the chamber, you pull your trigger, your primer detonates, it ignites your propellant. As that propellant combusts, it builds up pressure, forcing the projectile down the barrel. As the projectile travels down the barrel, combustion is still occurring, pressure is building up until the projectile leaves the muzzle, relieving that pressure. If you have a longer barrel, the projectile spends more time in the barrel, more complete combustion, and more pressure is built up, so you get greater velocity. So there are some exceptions but most of the time, the longer your barrel, the greater velocity you'll get, up to a point. And that holds true with handguns and with rifles. But how true is that when it comes to shotguns? And how much difference does barrel length really make? Let's do a demonstration. So to demonstrate the difference that barrel length can make, I have two Mosin Nagant rifles. Both are loaded with Wolf 762 by 54 r 148 grain full metal jacket spear point. The only significant difference between these two rifles is, if I measured right, this one has a 28 inch barrel, this one has a 20 inch barrel. Let's go to the chronograph and see how much difference we get in velocity. And we'll start with the longer barreled model. Twenty-eight fifty-five. Twenty-eight eighty. Twenty-nine twenty. Twenty-eight seventy-two. And twenty-nine seventeen. Now let's see how that compares with the shorter barrel. And now the twenty-inch barreled carbine. 2615 2642 2674 and 2642 Now, let's go crunch the numbers. Well, I crunched the numbers, and with the longer barrel rifle, we got a mean velocity of 2,888 feet per second. With the short barrel, 2,637. That's a difference of 251 feet per second. That's a significant difference. So we see that barrel length can make a difference. But how will that translate into shotgun barrel length? Well, we have a few shotguns. Let's do some tedious chronograph testing and see what we can learn. I'm going to start with a Mossberg Shockwave with a 14 inch barrel, and I have it loaded with Federal 12 gauge, 2 and 3 quarter inch, 1 and 1 quarter ounce of number 6 lead birdshot. Typically, I set the chronograph up at 7 yards, but when using a shotgun with multiple projectile ammunition, for the health of the chronograph, I like to shoot from 4 yards. 1131. 1100. 1054 1054 1088 Now when we get a reading that's the same number twice in a row that indicates that it might be a malfunction so I'm going to shoot one more shot 1078 Now let's try a gun with a longer barrel now I have a Mossberg 500 with a 20 and a half inch barrel, which is also loaded with the Federal 12 gauge, two and three quarter inch, one and one quarter ounce of number six lead birdshot. 1168. 1154. 1160. 1168. And 1157. Now let's try a different gun. And now a Remington 870 with an 18 and a half inch barrel, which is still loaded with the same Federal ammunition. 1106. 
1169. 1143, 1154, and 1158. Let's try one more gun. And now a Remington 870 Wingmaster with a 30 inch barrel, which is still loaded with Federal 12 gauge, two and three quarter inch, one and one quarter ounce of number six lead bird shot. 1238, 1218, 1230, 1251, and 1280. Now let's go crunch those numbers. Well, I crunched the numbers and here they are. With our Mossberg Shockwave with this 14 inch barrel, we got 1,090. When we go to the Mossberg 500 with this 20 and a half inch barrel, we get 1157. That's a gain of 67 feet per second. Is that significant? Maybe, yes. But when we go from the Mossberg 500 to the Remington 870 Tactical with a barrel that's two inches shorter, we go to 1146, a loss of 11 feet per second. That's within the variation of one round to the next. That's not significant at all. But when we go from the 870 Tactical with an 18 and a half inch barrel to the 870 Wingmaster with a 30 inch barrel, we go from 1146 to 1243. That's a gain of 97 feet per second. Yes, that is a significant difference when you're talking about shooting a shotgun with birdshot. So it would appear from this that changing the length of your shotgun barrel, if you just change it a little bit, doesn't change your velocity. If you make a significant change in barrel length, you do get a significant change in velocity. But this is with birdshot. What kind of numbers will we get with buckshot? Let's go back to the chronograph. So let's try some buckshot. I'm going to use this Suprema 12 gauge, two and three quarter inch double lot buck nine pellet. Now they call it Suprema. I don't think that word means what they think it means, but due to our current situation, it's the shot that I can spare. So let's see how we do. 1277. 1283. 1271. 1284, and a malfunction. 1268. Let's try that with a longer barrel. And now the Mossberg 500. 1310. 1339. 1329. 1312. And 1319. And now our 870 with its 18 and a half inch barrel. 1217, 1298, 1286, 1266, 1317, and 1283. Now let's try the Wingmaster. And now the Wingmaster with its 30 inch barrel. 1393, 1359, 1376, 1383, and 1355. Let's crunch the numbers. So I crunched the numbers with our buckshot ammunition, and here's the results. Now with the Mossberg Shockwave, we got a velocity of 1276. When we go to the Mossberg 500 with its 20 inch barrel, we got a velocity of 1321, 45 feet per second more. Interesting, with our Remington 870 with its 18 and a half inch barrel, we got a velocity of 1277. Virtually the same as what we got with the Mossberg Shockwave. That can be the inconsistency of one round to the next. But when we go from the Remington 870 Tactical with 1277 to the Remington 870 Wingmaster with 1373, we get a gain of 96 feet per second. With the bird shot from one of these to the next was a gain of 97 feet per second. So there's a consistent result. But what it really shows us is just like with the bird shot, when using buckshot, the longer barrel is going to generally give you greater velocity. So the bottom line question, although with handguns and rifles, barrel length can certainly affect velocity, do we get that same effect in shotguns? And the answer is yes, we do. So as always, don't try this at home on what you call a professional, and thanks for watching the shotgun barrel length and how it affects velocity video.